everybody, this is Valesa from Alay Refurbish, and today's furniture makeover has been inspired by these display arch cabinets that I've been seeing all over the place. But the one that caught my attention the most was this one from Pottery Barn. So if you don't want to miss on this Pottery Barn dupe, stick around for today's transformation. <laughs> to say after looking on Facebook, Craigslist, thrift stores, all over the place, I finally found the right piece. To recreate this look, I'm gonna be cutting wood to make new shelves, I'm gonna replace the backing, we're gonna cut some pole wrap painting. Keep watching. My search for such a piece came to an end after two years. I saw this ad on Facebook Marketplace, but after reaching out and not hearing back from the seller, I assumed that she had already sold it. To my surprise, a couple of days later, the post was still up, but the price and the item description had changed. So I decided to reach back and give it another shot and when I picked it up I found out two things The first one was that as soon as the seller posted the piece She already had 25 people interested within three minutes as it turns out there was somebody already scheduled to pick up the item before me but after finding out that the upper curved glass was broken lucky for me he backed down the broken glass on the top really didn't mean much to me because i had plans to replace it with a vendable panel that i could paint the second thing we found out was that it was professionally wired and a lot of lights were added i think this cabinet could have been a disco ball yeah there were lights all over in every single shelf in every side so we actually cut a lot of wires so we could remove the shelves to be able to put the cabinet in the back of our van and bring it home and here i'm just removing a bunch more cables and lights since the plan is to replace all the mirror on the back with wood i'm removing the backing Ladies and gentlemen, if you ever tackle a cabinet like this that has lots of hinges and you're gonna take it apart, you're gonna thank yourself later if you label all of the things. I label the glass, the rubber pieces that keep the glass in place, the hinges, the screws, all of it. I'm using Simple Green to quickly just wipe down my piece and start sanding with 120 grit. I used my surf prep sander to sand most of the piece, but when it came to the frames and specifically where the ledges were the glass sat on, there was a very sticky substance. And for all those sticky areas, I ended up using my carbide scraper. I'm not going to lie, it took a little bit of time and a little bit of elbow grease, but I finally got it all removed. Then I proceeded to clean the piece one last time with a TSP substitute. The frame of the cabinet is gonna be painted with coal black from Fusion Mineral Paint. And I'm using this clear shellac to prime and block any wood tannings from coming through the new paint job. I'm gonna be applying a total of three coats and waiting an entire hour after that last coat before I can start scuff sanding in preparation for paint. While that dries, we're gonna do a quick run to the hardware store. And the first thing we're gonna buy here it's a bendable panel that's paintable. It will replace the curved glass that was on the top. Do you guys remember that backing that had a mirror on it? 
We're gonna be replacing it with this red oak panel. The last piece that we're picking up today is to make the shelves. The way that we're keeping today's makeover more affordable and environmentally responsible is by buying this thin layer of real hardwood veneer that is bonded to both sides of a softwood plywood core. I'm also buying this pre-glued iron-on real wood veneer to make the edges, especially of the three-quarter oak panel, prettier to make my shelves. For sizing, all we're gonna be doing is placing the original pieces on top of the panels, tracing them and making the cuts. Even though this panel is bendable, you still need two sets of hands to give it that curvature that it needs while you're holding it in place. You also wanna need some clamps to help you keep that position before you can screw it in. And just so you know, we don't own any fancy tools. We're not woodworkers, even though we do work quite a bit with wood, especially me. But we thought that this panel, being that it's only $5.59, was a really affordable way to take this piece to another level. They were three decorative brass flowers attached to the square pieces. When I removed them, there were some holes that were left, so I'm just covering those up with this wood filler. I'm gonna be coming back after half hour, sanding them until smooth, and then I might as well just start scuff sanding so that I can start painting, but not before getting rid of all the sanding dust. For this project, I'm using the Earlick Spray Station HV5500. I'm adding a little bit of water to my paint to make sure it's the right consistency. I don't have a ratio, I just eyeball it. I test it out and once my spray is consistent and it's not spottery, it's ready. a total of three coats of paint on the cabinet and while that last coat dries we're gonna be taking the red oak panel and laying down the original backing on top of it to make our cuts I've said this before but it's so nice when my husband's around and I can just focus on recording instead of recording and executing the task at hand at the same time <laughs> things move a lot faster and just a little FYI making curved cuts is a little more challenging and we love using the jigsaw here I really wanted to nail the stain color that's on the inspiration piece that I show you at the beginning of the video. And because of the amount of staining that I'm gonna have to do for this cabinet, I decided to test a few of the stains on the wood type that I'm gonna be staining. And finally decided to go for this Western Oak from Barathane. Just a quick tip, different woods are going to absorb and take on the stain different. 
And this is why I always recommend testing it out on a small area before you stain a larger piece. I'm so glad I did because I was 100% sure that I was going to choose the briar smoke color. But when I saw this western oak, it looked just like the inspiration piece. There are a few pieces to this puzzle and I'm working at some at the time due to the lack of room because my garage is full of furniture at the moment. So while well, the stain on those pieces in the garage dry, I'm ironing the wood veneer edge on the shelves. After I place the wood veneer edge in place, I'm covering it with aluminum foil and start ironing on a cotton setting. Then I use my roller to get any air bubbles out. Then you can just trim the axis. There are different tools in the market that you can use, but an X-Acto knife works just as good for me. The shelves are moving right along. All I have to do now is stain them. And then I'm going to be waiting a couple of days before top coating because I'm going to be using a water-based top coat over this oil-based stain. In the meantime, my husband and I are having a discussion about replacing the glass on the bottom part of the cabinet. After talking it out with my husband, since we're keeping this cabinet for our home, we want to be able to store whatever in here without needing to look pretty. The way that we chose to go about it was setting pole wrap. What I'm going to be doing is placing the glass on top of the pole wrap, tracing it, and cutting the pole wrap to size. So let's do it. Do we like how it looks and does it fit? Yes to both. So we're moving forward with our idea and now it's time to stain the pole wrap to match the backing and the shelves. For staining the pole wrap, I highly recommend using one of those cheap chip brushes to get into all those crevices. I'm gonna repeat this. Make sure that your oil-based stain is completely dry before applying a top coat, so a couple of days. For top coat, I loaded my detail finish Nassol Flexio 3500 from Wagner with high performance flat from General Finishes and applied three coats. I'm so happy to be able to put the cabinet back together and yes, thank you. Thank you to myself for labeling all the parts because now things are gonna start moving right along. And yes, the same rubber pieces that were keeping the glass in place are the ones that I'm using now to keep the pole wrap snug. With the help of an electric nail gun and hammer, we're nailing our new backing into place. Personally, this makeover is gonna go in the books for one of the most satisfying ones. I was so excited seeing it come together. And let's take you back to where it started. Let's not forget our $4,200 inspiration piece. And here is our $400 cabinet makeover. Let me know in the comments, what do you guys think of this pottery barn dupe? I will see you guys next time.